G'day YouTube. Today we're looking at uh, a thread repair kit. We've uh, managed to uh, strip, uh, like uh, many others I'm sure, uh, thread out of the block in an L98 engine, but as we know, look, all the L77s, you know, LS3s, all that sort of stuff, they're all the same. So we're not Robinson Crusoe with problems regarding block threads stripping. And anyway, so we thought, okay, how do we fix this? We went online and there's two versions. Uh, you can buy two, two options. And uh, one of the options is pretty expensive. It's in US dollars, it's more than $550 US in, in the US. So by the time you get that back to Australia, it's more than 1100 Australian with taxes and shipping, etc. And then there's this kit. Uh, it's an Amazon special basically, and it's a bit over $70. Uh, that uh, is in the US. Back here, it cost me 136 delivered, which we thought was pretty good. And that was a thousand Australian dollars difference, um, or 600 US difference. So we thought, look, you know, the car's a cheap car. A lot of people working on their cars with this problem, they're probably, you know, pretty cheap cars. They don't want to just blow a lot of money on fixing a couple of threads. So uh, we decided to bite the bullet. We bought bought the kit and uh, we'll give you an overview before we actually get into the video repair of the uh, job. But um, it's, it's well worth going through because there is a few things to explain. So the first thing they, uh, we need to look at is this drill. Um, it, it's basically for cleaning out the old treads and it does have a square on the end. If you didn't have a power, you know, like an electric or battery drill, you know, let's hope you do, because it's going to be, life's going to be a lot easier if you do. So that's the uh, drill. Then there's a counterbore. The counterbore is of limited use. And the reason I say it's of limited use, it can only counterbore down that depth. That depth is probably up to two mil. However, we did have a use for it. And that use was effectively creating a chamfer so that when we went to drill the, um, hole to recess the insert, it, the drill didn't jump because if the drill jumps at that moment um, and you scratch the block surface, which is aluminium, which is very easy to do, you're in a world of trouble because you're going to then have head gasket trouble um, and it's going to be a super difficult repair. So we use that to create a chamfer that the um, drill could go into. Now you then think, okay, this is, and this is not supplied in the kit. So you might think, you know, why? Well, I don't know why, but you need to buy it because that allowed me then to, and you'll, again, you'll see in the video, that allowed us to recess the insert down the hole, which is absolutely you know, required because if you don't uh, recess the insert down the hole, you're going to have the insert too close. I'll just open that up. You're going to have the insert too close to the surface of the block. And when you do that, when you then put the massive amount of tension that's put on by those head bolts, you'll actually distort the block surface. So that is then another um, potential problem for you because you'll then get head gasket trouble if the block surface is, is distorted. So you, the, you've got to just measure where the old threads start in your particular engine and then countersink it to, to that depth. The other thing is that these inserts are, you know, first of all, they're made really nice as far as I'm concerned. They're 28.2 millimeters long. The competitive, the more expensive one comes with more inserts and things like that. Um, and their insert is 30 millimeters long. So there's a slight difference of 1.8 millimeters, which is not very much. We thought we'd still, you know, we'd get away with that. And um, anyway, so You've got to then countersink it down, so you'll need to go and buy a 15 millimeter drill. I bought this one because it's also turned down so that you can get it in a 13 millimeter chuck. The tap that's supplied is uh, a bottoming tap, and you can see that it's a bottoming tap because basically the threads go all the way right down to the bottom. And it's made out of high speed steel. You can see there HSS. Um, HSS, high speed steel, it's less likely to break. And that was a good reassurance to me because you'll write the engine off if you crack, if you crack you know, the, um, the tap down the hole and you know, you've effectively broken the tap because you probably you won't be able to get it out and the only then way to get them out is to disintegrate them or grind them with a diamond, which is an absolute nightmare and expensive. So what I did do, just because I was being extra cautious, 
is I then went and bought, um, again, a Sutton's um, tap, and you can see the taper on that. And I thought that'll start the hole easier. I'll get a good bite. Um, that's the way, you know, these things work. And that way then, uh, you know, I just felt a bit more relaxed about it. You probably don't have to do it, but you've got to remember, you've got to finish with that bottoming tap because you've got to create enough um, area in length so that that insert can get screwed in because if you just use that, that would be a big, big mistake. The, the other thing is that like, just quickly, that's a chrome, a tungsten chrome alloy tap. It, it stays sharper longer, but they're a bit more prone to breaking. So just be aware of that. Then the last item that they supply, which is different to the photo that's actually on the, um, the listing, because it shows something that's much smaller, but you actually get the, the one that you really want. And they're just screwed on. This works really well. However, you've really got to be aware, make sure you've cut the full length of threads that you need because you're never screwing that thing back out. Um, it's a one-way one trip into the block. So just be aware of that. And uh, basically, let's get on with it. Let's get on with the repair, show you how it's done. We did the repair in situ in the car. The, um, the wind noise, uh, hopefully, is not too bad. It was insanely, we're doing this outside and uh, it was insane weather at the time. So uh, please just uh, be a bit patient with that if it's um, a bit noticeable, but. Just before I, I start drilling, what we've done is we've measured the depth of the hole just to make sure we're not gonna go into a water jacket or something crazy like that. So when we, we've done, check the bottom of the hole, and given all the bolts are the same length, all the holes will have the same depth. And um, one of the things you can see here, when we just put that there, is basically perfect. So we'll be just then um, going to the full depth of this drill, and uh, then we'll, uh, that, that, its job will be done. One of the reasons, um, one of the reasons apparently that these uh, can pop the threads is that people don't clean the hole out for liquid in a hydraulic block. So not only are the threads fighting the tension on the head, they're actually also fighting the hydraulic pressure that's pushing them up. That that wasn't the case, in, you know, with this. It was actually. The block was pretty much immaculate regarding how we cleaned all the threads out. But that's something to watch out for, just be careful. So now we'll change the, the drill bit and uh, use the part that was provided in the kit to give us hopefully a starting point for the 15 mil drill bit. set up for it so that we don't go too deep. We're only going to go to the area where we need to start, where we need to start the thread. So that's as deep as it is. So we need it drilled 15 mil down that far because that's not where the, um, where the threads will start. Hopefully, finesse the the uh, top of the hole so that it's uh, countersunk. When I'm talking about the top of the hole, I'm talking about where the 
actual inserts going so that it's got a nice countersink on it, which is the countersink that's it's a countersink that's created by the angle of the uh, of the drill, which is what it um, would get if it was used with the uh, tool that was supplied. We'll just now clean it up. test if it will go in is now like this is the insert tool obviously we haven't cut the thread so I'm putting it in now I just want to make sure it can go down the hole so we've got enough diameter and it does and that's where it starts so okay so that's that's um where it would that's where it would start so we've got about that much depth and compared to okay let's have a look that's pretty much perfect. I'm going to go with that. It's spot on. So that's our starting point. I'm going to now try and put a thread in there. It's an M14 2mm pitch thread. So um, we've got some Trefilex cutting oil. Just a touch. Let's get that in there. Normally you'd have a tap handle. Obviously you can't get it in here at the moment. Just get it down there to bottom. Then we can start with uh, a tap and turn it and then turn it back to break off the material that you've just cut. up to the point where I'll be able to measure then sort of how deep we're gone and then we'll also reverse the tap out so that we can clear all the cuttings the debris all right let's get it out I might cheat let's see if I can do it this way Okay, so that's our cuttings, we'll get rid of them. Okay, so we went down to there, so let's see what a reference was like. We'll grab a bolt. So obviously the tap has, has been down that far. So we're getting that's basically the full length, but obviously there's not any thread cut down the bottom where this is a starting tap. So, we might change the tap. We might change the tap. I'm just gonna see how, how deep we can go on that starting tap before we have to change. I'm gonna run the other tap now, which is the bottoming tap, which will clean up that part of the thread that we haven't got with the starting tap and that'll be the end of the tapping process which is the most risky part. Put some cutting fluid and this is the tap that was supplied with the kit. So that's where it then cleaned the last bits out. And we'll get a depth now. So where's the bolt? The bolt is here. So 
So that should exceed how far we're going to go down because what we know is that is where the, the thread pit starts. So we've got uh, thread starting Yeah, that's in excess of what we need, which is good, that's fine. We don't have to go any further. So success in not breaking, it's happened to the block, which is great, and uh, we'll now get the insert into there. Okay, well, we uh, got the brake cleaner down the hole and washed everything out. You can now see there's a thread starting down that hole in the block, and that's the thread that's gonna hold the insert. Um, I'm going to hope I got all the pipes right. Uh, the uh, insert I've just got screwed on is just screwed on by hand. And um, you can see that bit of a shoulder. We're going to use some uh, Loctite uh, 263, which is super stud lock. Um, we don't want it coming out. I'm not going to go crazy with the Loctite. But um, that, that should do it. So uh, let's get that in there and then we'll find out uh, how accurately we did all this. As they say in the classics, here goes nothing. The last thing I want is to jam up and not go all the way in. Screw that, and um, I'll get a bolt and see how close we got to setting at the right level. I mean, a millimeter or two, an eighth of an inch maximum, probably doesn't matter. So it literally touches the tape. Anyway, it should hold because the insert looks good. We'll find out very soon. Thanks for watching.